Where do you think that people go wrong the most when trying to pick a colour scheme for their army? They have their favourite colours and they just go, right, I just want to paint the army in my favourite colours. If your, your third company marking is the wrong colour because you thought it complemented it more nicely, I don't think you should be crucified. No, but... no, yeah, definitely that's not that's not the, the outcome that anyone would want. Starting out as a painter, how do you stop yourself from swapping approach constantly? I think a way to stop stop sort of jumping around too much is to possibly just try and do a different stylistic approach per miniature when you first start out. Before we get started with today's episode, we wanted to let you know that we have new ranges of fantastic products over on the Siege Studios shop. Whether you want to purchase a PDF tutorial for a character that you're painting, you need a new airbrush, painting accessories, or want to book a class, you will find what you need. We also have a bunch of merchandise, which is a great way to support the podcast. To see what we stock now, head over to cstudios.co.uk forward slash shop. Right then, James, let's get started with uh, with this week's topic, which is uh, talking about colour theory this week. Yeah. So uh, does colour theory matter? Yeah, 100%. I think it does. I think um, it. I think it's a really crucial part of, of painting miniatures. I th it's like, the best way for me to explain it is it's like, it, it really makes painting a lot easier by having an understanding of it the ability to choose a color that you know is going to work with the inherent color that you're using it does help to just build a, a scheme or build like a, an overall sort of like fi finished result with a miniature really it really helps with that um you don't necessarily have to have like uh, color theory is such a such an in-depth uh, topic with loads of different types of color relationships and loads of different types of um uh, of things which are involved within it like you know but i think there's a core competency understanding what contrasting and what harmonious colors are i think that gives any, any painter the ability to make informed choices when it comes to colors mm. I, I think sometimes if you if you don't have a, a, a minimal understanding of it i think not so much uh the actual sort of what you end up with as a finished result because at the end of the day it's painting miniatures is oh, if you want to have two colors next to each other you can do that's fine um but i think just just for having an understanding of it so that it makes the choosing of the colors that you're using easier. And I think that's the thing where you're going to save time. And I think that's where you're going to be, be better off by having an understanding. We've all been there. We've been painting a miniature. And we're like, oh, I don't really know what color to use on this because it's this color. Having that minimal understanding of color theory that allows you to go, well, this color works with it, or this color is a, is a harmony to the complement, and it will still work because it harmonizes with what the complementary color is of this object's opposing color that just helps massively to then just make choices so much easier for you as a painter. Mm. I think it's something that I've like kind of glossed over a bit, not really like intentionally, but beyond the like sort of general abstract understanding of like, you know, opposing colors and the primary colors and whatnot. It's not really something yeah. that I've, I, I don't want to like sit and do homework when I'm doing no, no, my I, get you know that, I, mean? I get that. Um, for me, it's never really felt like much of a roadblock either though. No, no, I agree. I, I, I you know, and, and some, some people will go all their lives painting and just choosing colors, or whatever, and not really use it at all whatsoever. But for, for, and again, there are loads of different color relationships out there. So you've obviously the the, the a triadic relationship is the obvious one. Is the triangular shape one on there with with where like and primary colors is a really good example. Obviously, red, blue, and and, and yellow. Um, but I think the other thing to to bear in mind as well is that by having an understanding of it, it just means that when when you when you do have that color scheme that you're a bit unsure of, you you don't necessarily have to spend so much time just I'm in an hour about stuff, and you can pick with confidence because you know it's going to work. Mm. Um, and also, I would say that I think that that color schemes that do have uh, a very minimal understanding of color theory behind them, they do tend to be a bit work better on the models as well, and they yeah. do the models do look a bit. I don't want to use the word natural. That's not really the way to me to explain it. But they do. They just do look like they work. I think that's one of the the, the best way for me to explain it. Um, sometimes when you when you throw caution to the wind and don't don't use sort of color theory to an extent, or when you just haphazardly put colors on in the vain hope that they're going to work together, that's when sometimes maybe a bit of frustration, which leads to other things that we've spoken yeah. about, comes in. Um, I think with me, I've kind of like. Any, any sort of color theory knowledge that I have, I think it's kind of been learned on accident because it's not so much a like when I sit down and I'm like painting the cloth, I'm like, oh, what color is going to perfectly complement it? I don't think for me it's as much a like I whip out my color wheel and I think about it because I, like I said, I don't really have that complex of an understanding of it. No. But I think through experience, I kind of just naturally know based yeah, on yeah. the paints that I have what ones yeah. will work together. Yeah, no, no, definitely. I, I like, again, I'm not sitting here from a point of understanding every iota of color theory. But no, of course. Believe, yeah, me, yeah. believe me, like, you know, there's still loads that I, that I, would need to spend ages looking into and researching and understanding and and I I I really work with when choosing colors I really work with 
that that sort of harmonious and also complementary use of color there that the, that's like the tip of the iceberg when it comes to it and then again there's analogous there's the triadic there's loads of different different types of color relationships and and, and sort of like uh, thing that you can use but um but really just understanding that if i use this color the opposite color on the color wheel is this mm. and the color to the left or right of it is the harmonious color of that contrasting color so and, and that's helped with loads of decisions through through my painting over the years because it just gives me that point of origin and going right okay well i've painted a cloth and neutral color which is this the armor color is this color so i could shade theoretically the armor with this or i could shade the cloth with this and it'll work with that armor color because it's a harmonious or complementary color. having that minimal understanding of the vast topic that is color theory just i find just gives your models a bit of a leg up and also as well just gives you a bit more and it's it's confidence you know we've all been there in their early, early days you know painting where we're unsure what paint, paint to pick up or what to use or whatever it really does help with that um, well as someone who's like uh maybe looking to start a new army and they don't have that understanding as someone who sees a lot of projects obviously with siege where do you think that people go wrong the most when trying to pick a color scheme for their army I think the planning of any project is probably one of the most important things and color choices, I would say is a, a very big percentage of that within, within planning a, a project or planning an army. Um, I think one of the things to, to that people, where people go wrong is that they have their favorite colors and they just go, right, I just want to paint the army in my favorite colors and not considering that this color, although albeit not your favorite color might work better with this based on color theory. Hmm. Um, there's no reason. Again, I don't. I don't want to sound like the, the the miniature painting police here. You can put on. You can put on <laughs> like you could put on whatever colours you want on your miniatures. That's perfectly fine. But I think for the minimal amount of investment it takes to understand that very brief uh, brief overview of colour theory, it will just help you hugely as a painter. And I think some of the biggest areas where people do go wrong is that they do just pick their favourite colours because it's their favourite colour, and they'll put two colours together and then wonder why it doesn't the model doesn't inherently look as good. Um, the other thing I would say is that like sometimes people are picking colors that are, that are very, very close to each other as well. And it, and then, and, and what happens is the, like you need contrast is really important on miniatures, um, because it gives them a weight of depth. It gives them the, that, 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 that look that you need to just, just pick out all those tiny little details on the model. If it's a very close palette or the colors are very, very close to each other, you, you, you kind of disregard a lot of the little details yeah, and things it becomes that hard to pull off that because the silhouette is uh, much more blended i suppose it's harder to see the details if you've got like a green model with green cloth yeah and then the gun's green yeah it's... i mean if, if you're going for if you're going for a camouflage model that would be perfect yeah but, I but, guess so, but, yeah. but but like i i personally wouldn't advocate that and i would i would personally uh I, I'm a big fan of a painting journal and planning projects and planning colors and all those kind of things and i think that when you overlay that preparation and planning with a bit of understanding color theory it's going to just you're, you're going to be a lot more happier and confident with what you paint and also the execution that you have at the fin at the end of the process um it, you, know, you don't need to sit there for three years studying from from tibetan monks how to do color theory you don't you don't need to do that like you could you could spend ages like you know learning color theory like you know in depth everything and then what will happen is you'll start looking at everyone's models and realizing that the color theory doesn't work or whatever the case may be which just becomes really nitpicky and it's not fun you know um but but what i what i would say is that like just just being able to just have an understanding of it is going to hugely benefit you as a painter um so let's go back to the planning a color scheme thing then. so say say you're new to the color theory idea or you're just looking for some inspiration right so you're planning out your army project and you're sat there thinking let's pick an example because it's the common one space marines right i've got my primaris army they're all built they're all primed i'm ready to go hmm what color am i going to pick do you think that this is a time to go like oh, i'm going to go really rich in the law or i'm going to look at a load of box art or i'm going to look at a load of real life references there's a lot of different things at play there. Like if you like law, then undoubtedly you'll probably pick a chapter that already exists. If you're more of a competitive game, you'll probably pick one army that, that you just make a color scheme up so you can use whatever rules you like. Um, I'm a big fan of, of both of those avenues. There's not really a wrong or right at all whatsoever. Uh, I would possibly say that for me, law is like when it's got such a weight of burden, obviously all this law and, and all these different things that go on in the narrative, it seems a little bit of a shame to to overlook that when it comes to these models in my mind. Like if if someone invests just as much effort into the paint job as they do law, I think you get a better better model in the end of it, if, yeah. if that makes sense. There's kind of some exceptions to that though because I, I personally don't like it when people go like, 
really hard on criticizing people because they didn't technically no. get the correct color of no. red stripe on the third. No, I I, I I agree. There's a little no. bit. There's a little bit of there's a, there's a line. Like, yeah, yeah, like you, you know, know, if your your third company marking is the wrong color because you thought it complemented it more nicely, I don't think you should be crucified. No, but. no, yeah, definitely. That's not that's not the the outcome that anyone would want. But like, but but I I, I do agree completely. I think that you know, when starting out the planning of the project, pick a pick an armor color that you or pick a in when I say armor color, pick a main color i think is the thing that, that that i should the best way to explain it pick a main color that number one you're really happy with because you're going to have to spend ages painting it yeah, yeah? um and whether you're using brushes or whether you're using airbrushes or whatever you're using to apply that main color you've got to be happy with what you put on the model in the first place and then my next point of course would be picking a color which does help define that model with detail by contrasting the main color as best as possible and i would argue that the the the, the best place to start would be to pick something that through color theory hmm. works well that's nothing to say that like you could go i want a yellow armored model and then i want green accents there's nothing wrong with that but for me i would probably go yeah if i was going yellow i'd either go red blue or potentially purple because it's a harmonious color of red or i'd go maybe like other colors that are harmonious to any of the those uh, those contrasting colors that i i just think that that would give you a better starting point than 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 just uh so maybe that's the compromise then is like pick your one color that you definitely want like your favorite color yeah, whatever yeah and then maybe that's where you start dipping into the color theory without going too crazy with it is okay this is my favorite color i'm happy with this one we're going to be like super strict on that but let's start accessorizing around it that is definitely that's the best way to put it, accessorizing and, and the other thing i just say like obviously we're talking about color theory in this episode but the one thing to also bear in mind is also neutral colors hmm. so your whites, your greys, you, you may be like different tones like that, black as well. Like you, even just the saturated desa- colors, really. even desaturated yeah. colors. Like you can add those to, you can add those to the models and use those, and it will not take away from the main color, but it will also just give uh, a very good scheme because it doesn't clash too much. Yeah. I think like that. That's something else also to bear in mind. That's why I like Marines a lot, you know, is because it's like you can kind of do what you want in the sense of yeah, yeah. if you've got like talk your basic like primaris intercessor or your tactical marine whatever yeah you can literally paint the whole thing one color and then after that what they really got like some eye lenses and like maybe a couple of buttons there's not a lot going on there's not loads no or you could be like i want this split color scheme because they've got like <laughs> you know the left arm's blue and the right arm's red or whatever yeah yeah or maybe it's a fancier model and they've got loads of cloth it's a character they've got all these different uh power weapons and yep. you can go, kind of go mental with all the colors now i think that's where people probably see more roadblocks is like i think probably depending on the army or the mon- the miniatures that you're painting is i could see that being a potential roadblock for people because obviously if you've got some busier models let's say mm-hmm. with way more parts and like you're saying you don't want it to all be in the same color yeah now you've kind of got a lot of choices to make because it might be a miniature where there's like in terms of uh, surface area it might be equal parts three or four colors yeah, I, I think that's one of the things. And then it's also deciding what color you're going to use on those certain parts because there's loads of variables in place. Like you could choose, uh, I don't know, you could choose, like let's just take obviously the 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 Hawk Lords that we've done for for Leviathan. Like you could take that. We obviously chose purple as the armor color because that's the color that the Hawk Lords are. But then there's different avenues that you can go down. You can go red, you can go yellow, or you can go, uh, you can go blue, like teal, like a cyan well, we color. We kind of went for a blue sort of, bluish black tones didn't we on the yeah. bolt casings yeah on the bolt casings the lenses all those different parts you know so so you, there's various different options for you to then choose and use on 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 the project but as long as as long as you have a, a minimal understanding of it it's gonna what what you should see it as is a complement to what you your choice is i think that's one of the things that really really does help like it's not this big scary thing that you, you should be afraid of learning a little bit of because all it's going to ever do is just make the choosing process for, for painting miniatures 10 times easier for you. Mm. Like it, it's almost like, it's almost like it, it lays out the steps that you need to take along the process of completing the miniature by having, by having some choices, which are, you can still got the option of going this color, or this color, or this color, or this color, or maybe I'll do a little bit of this color. The one thing I would also advocate as well, and just touch upon is, um, it's percentage of, of color. So even within, let's just take ultramarines as an example. Okay. They're a triadic color scheme of yellow, blue, or they're a triadic primary color, uh, primary color set. So basically your yellow, your red, and your blue within that, 
like the percentage of each color used is very different from each other. So you look at it and be like, right, okay, well, the blue is like 80%, the yellow or gold, which it is now is like is 10% and the red is like, oh my God, 15% for the yellow or gold and then 5% is the red, if that makes sense. So like that the, you can within that, and this is where it does get a bit more, bit more difficult, is that within that relationship that you've chosen of colors, you can then determine the percentages used and based upon the percentage of each color used, each of those, you could get three, four different schemes that all use the same relationship and colors, but they in, in they all look incrementally massively different because of how much color of each color you've used. So you shouldn't just think, oh, well, if I choose this relationship of these three colors, all my models are going to look the same. You could do loads of little things and the percentages used, used the percentage used of each color would make each scheme or thing very variable within that and that's something else to also consider as well and that's before you add in neutral tones as well like your blacks well, and you whites. say about neutral tones but i think something we also have kind of glossed over as well is like a temperature difference so like you've got warm colors and cool colors and you could, that's that's a massive opportunity for contrast of course it is yeah on your miniatures yeah. as well um obviously within that you know you i'd say that's actually probably one of the more beginner friendly accessible areas of it like rather than like whipping out your color wheel and going crazy it's like <laughs> you you've got if even if you wanted something that was like similar colors you can go for like a very cool blue versus a very warm rich blue yeah that that would be a great way to do that it. that helps massively as well and and just you know if you've never looked at color color wheel before then it is divided into cool and warm colors on each, on one side and the other and it does give you that understanding of it but as a tool it's just something that you should have in front of you to fl to look at and just have a look at as you're working or you can flip it over. You, it's got some of got really good dials on that you can move and you can basically see how colors interplay with each other based on the movement of the dial, which is quite good also. Um, but yeah, you're quite right. The, the use of the use of temperature on models is also, you know, and I think temperature also determines the overall viable feel of a model as well. And when you combine that with choosing colors, I think it gives you a very good opportunity to, to, um, to sort of make some really informed choices when it comes to creating miniatures. Just a quick one. We wanted to remind you that you can get your own miniatures painted by the world-class team here at Siege Studios. We offer a variety of painting levels and services to meet your needs and budget. Whether you want a centerpiece character or an entire gaming army, we offer well above the industry standard in both quality and experience. You can learn more about our services and get a quote now at siegestudios.co.uk. And in the month of August, new clients can get 5% off any commission by using the code AUGUST5. Back to the show. Let's integrate question of the week with this topic i think let's do it uh, so our question of the week this week is starting out as a painter how do you stop yourself from swapping approach constantly i think you've got a fine balance there of when you start out every the, the whole world of miniature painting and miniatures is this big not scary but this really exciting thing where you get to pick up models and practice with them and try different things you've got all these colors and things that you're going to be like putting on models um i think a way to stop stop sort of jumping around too much is to possibly just try and do a different stylistic approach per miniature that you paint when you first start out all right that's a good idea because what that will do for you is it will mean that you focus on one project completed fruition uh, and then that way when you do change to something else you go right well i've seen this model online as a, a most people invert in, inevitably do um, and it's painted in this style i don't know how that's done i'm going to try and do that on this model and then you go all in on that execution um to try and either emulate or just to try and learn that specific thing we always say like different styles of painting should be more like different languages that's the way to sort of best way to explain it um you, you shouldn't be restricted to just painting one way you might have a preferred way of painting like myself and yourself that we obviously like the box art style um but there's nothing wrong with learning a more uh visible brushstroke style or a bit more of a of a desaturated maybe even like blanchet to or like a grim dark style or something like that you should all of these things are strings to a bow to make you a better painter but you know for, for, for the question at hand i think one of the things to do is just by keeping a style on the project completing it and whether the, that project is a single character or an army or a couple of miniatures from a war band or something like that that would be a really good way to make sure that you that you stick within what you're trying to execute what and then when you do jump to something else you can completely like hit the reset button and it's a fresh palette and a fresh way of actually doing those things yeah i think jumping miniature does help or jumping project and style at the same time does also help i think my issue with this question is kind of that it implies that that's necessarily a bad thing because it i think to some people like jump changing approach is kind of a virtue because i think a lot of people get stuck in this rut of like i'm always painting the same thing or i'm always painting the same style i'm looking for inspiration to branch out yeah yeah but i think that actually as a beginner having access to such a variety of things 
is a good thing because ultimately at the end of the day, if you keep on trying this stuff constantly, that to me implies that if you're swapping what you're doing a lot, you may be not happy with that thing that you're doing or the, the approach for that. And that means that you haven't necessarily found that pocket that you sit in yet. So I think that trying lots of things is actually a really great thing. And I think the attitude that you have in the minute might actually be the best thing for you it, because if you're getting bored of, of what you're stuck in, you might, that might lead you down the path of like uh, not being satisfied from the hobby, not getting from it what you want. And just ultimately being unsatisfied, I don't think is a good thing because you're probably going to end up quitting after a while. Yeah, there is that. And and I think if you're painting the same style all the time or if you're doing things in the same approach all the time, you might get burnt out a lot quicker as well. Mm. Whereas by by painting and trying different things and trying to emulate different things or to try, maybe doing something that isn't texturized and then doing something that is texturized or um, you know maybe something that is a bit more weathered and then something that is very clean, by changing up all those different things, it's just going to keep it, like variety is the spice of life at the end of the day. And you are going to you are gonna be able to just, learn more i think in an earlier point i think that's a lot a mistake that some painters do make is that they they just focus on one specific way of executing something and a lot of the skills that other styles require to execute them they aren't learned because you don't go near them at all whatsoever and they then they they then they transform into this fear of doing them because you think you're going to make a mistake or something like that i think when you first start out it should be the most exciting time for you as a painter and even if you're painting for loads of years and you've been doing the same thing over and over and over again that jump outside your comfort zone to do something which is a little bit different than maybe i think that's going to help you hugely i think you shouldn't restrict yourself if you restrict yourself you might get very very good at that stylistic execution or that style of painting or that way of doing something there's nothing wrong with that but that shouldn't be all that you aspire to be in my mind i think you should be constantly trying to absorb different ways of doing stuff and to, to then you they're, they're all little tools so that as you're painting you can use them to, to to decide upon different ways of finishing a model or rendering a model if you follow me and i think that that's something that is actually very good when you first start out you should be suit like a sponge and just i think this is a great problem to have because ultimately like I, what i'm always suggesting to people who are struggling with with burnout is or not not just burn out, but like they want to improve. Yeah, is to try different things. So I think that ultimately, like you're you're actually in the best spot you're ever going to be. It is, yeah. When you when you first when you first get into this, I mean, obviously everyone gets excited and buys way more models than they need to start off with. But like um, when you first start out, this it should be the most fun time for you because you just you just have so much. You got this brand new world of, of, of all different things to execute and to try and do and to try and copy or to emulate or to paint or whatever. It, it should be the your first year of painting should be the most. You should you shouldn't decide your style within the first year of painting. No, in my certainly mind. not. I think I think you you should experiment and try loads of things because once you once you've tried all those things, you can go. Well, you know what? Look, I tried that. The model came out okay, but I I really prefer doing this. Like, but if you didn't if you didn't do that other execution and you just done this single thing always. Uh, you know, I'm very guilty of painting red a lot, you know, and that's why I've, I've I can't I, imagine I, why. <laughs> yeah. I've spent a lot of a lot of I've I've had to consciously say to myself over like many, many times, like, look, you know, I'm not gonna paint anything with that colour or for that army for a long time because I I know I, I enjoy it. I know it's what I like massively, but it doesn't help me become a better painter, which is why having things which are different and when you approach it would be a different model, let alone applying a different stylistic execution to it. Um I think this shows like the fear that beginners have that they're going to like do it wrong. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. But but there's nothing, there's, there isn't anything wrong with just picking the model up and just doing something. If you want to, if you want to dry brush it, slap chop it, edge highlight it, box art it, like, you know, I, you should be trying all these things. So then it gives you the skills in those different areas. It just, it just gives you a wealth of knowledge as a painter. But the, the, the fear is, oh, I'm going to make a mistake. And you're really not like, there's nothing detrimental that's going to happen and you can strip the model if you make a mistake i think for someone listening who like i said is maybe like stuck in a bit of a rut or maybe a rhythm of always painting in the same way i think this question is kind of proof that the grass is always greener right like, it is yeah yeah definitely yeah 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 but that but that is the case like you know um yeah if you just 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 experiment and try, try different things you'll you'll massively massively learn the most within that that experimentation that you do uh, and and color theory should be this best friend that's there to guide you along that experimentation if you if you study a little bit of it enough to make informed choices which i think is really what color theory should be used for uh, rather than criticizing or critiquing stuff you know in a factual manner just because at the end of the day it's art and if you want to put x color next to x color there's nothing inherently yeah. wrong with that how far into like painting did you start to think about it a bit more consciously probably probably more when it came to competition painting mm. i think because um obviously when when 
when you enter a competition, the, the people that are judging it have a, an understanding of that, uh, a great, a much greater understanding of it than, than, than I've got. And, um, but understanding those minimal basic things, again, it just makes those, all those things I've said earlier in the episode, like easier, but that's where for me, it became really important is when I wanted to improve my painting to a level whereby I can enter competitions with confidence that, uh, that, that what I've submitted is the best thing that I can do. You can paint a model perfectly, like seamlessly, like as close to whatever style you're executing or the best rendition or whatever it is you painted. And if you're entering it in a competition and the color theory is, is potentially off, then it really boils down to personal bias or you might have a, one judge that's down to personal bias and you might have a judge that is so on the line about color theory that the model is discredited because of that. Hmm. So really, unfortunately, it does sound like a little bit of a tick box, a box ticking exercise, but it is a box that you should try and tick if you're entering stuff like that. Um, there's all manner of crazy relationships that work that you don't have to stick to the direct compliment relationship. And that's where having a better understanding of some of the more difficult relationships or more non, non well-known relationships is, is beneficial for you. Um, but it, that's where for me, it really became important. Again, it's, it should sit as a best friend. It's your right hand man that's there to help you when, when, when painting. Mm. That's what Mine was kind of a similar thing actually. Cause like when I, I, I have a very, very rudimentary, like understand of color theory, like let that come through first. Yeah, when I say I, what, I'm exactly the same. So before I say yeah. what I'm about to say. So for me, when I came to do my GD entry, mm -hmm. I chose black Templars. Yeah. They're black models, right? <laughs> so I've got to find some color somewhere. They have red weapons. Yep. Me being the absolute color theory genius that I am went, well, <laughs> I'm going to do the base in green. Yeah. I'm going to do the grass. <laughs> green is the opposite of red. Yeah. And that, that, I think that should just outline like how simple and how small of a afterthought it can kind it, of but be. But it really for is. It really is that, that like, it doesn't need to be like the, that you, you, you shouldn't see color theory as this, oh, it's a super difficult thing. Like it should just be right. Okay. Well, I've used this color. This color is directly, uh, again, this is a very rudimentary reduced kind of like without spending four years in Tibet learning color theory. Like this is a very much like very much a reduced thing. Like you should literally just go, right, this is the opposite color. If I'm doing the gun casings, this color, it might be good to do some of the buttons, this color, because then they'll make each other stand out and contrast great better, or it might complement it because it harmonizes. And that, that is really where the understanding, I think that's the, like, unless you're wanting to really invest 300 hours into a model and paint it for a competition or just paint a model as best as physically possible with that mindset in place. Um, you don't really need to cross that line too much of once you have that rudimentary understanding. I agree. I think, I think, I think that's the thing. It, sh it should just be a benefit, not, not a, a full exercise. You know, um, I think that's one of the important things with color theory. Well, thank you very much, everyone, for listening to this week's episode of Paint Perspective. If you would like your question answered in Question of the Week, then please leave a comment below here on YouTube, or we do a, uh, a story every week on our Instagram page if you're on the audio version of the platform. If you could do us a favor, please do subscribe to the channel or follow us on your audio platform of choice. That'd be really, really massively helpful. And I'm sure you've got some hobby painting friends, so please do share it. It would really help us out. Thank you very much, and we will catch you next week. <laughs>